Now, with insecurity still claiming lives and property around Nigeria, the call for a comprehensive restructuring of the country continues to resonate across a wide spectrum of stakeholders. Some of those wishing this position took the opportunity of making their feelings known at the recent public hearings on the review of the 1999 constitution. But there are those who are calling for a dual restructuring as a solution to the many problems of Nigeria. Osita Okechuku is the Director General of the Voice of Nigeria, the Chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, and he now joins us from our Arise Abuja Studios. Good to have you with us, Mr. Okechuku. Now, you highlighted uh, the concept of dual restructuring. What exactly do you mean by that and how feasible uh, is it in Nigeria with uh, divergent views everywhere? Thank you very much. Methinks that in the cacophony of voices, the silver bullet or the low hanging fruit is dual restructuring. Dual restructuring had already commenced by President Muhammad Buhari and the 80th National Asse and State Assemblies, which gave back to Section 1213 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic that granted autonomy to state legislatures and state judiciaries. The only remaining item there are two, one, an independent local council as envisaged by our constitution and also the devolution of certain items from the exclusive legislative list, the concurrent list to the states, such as mining. Because there are a lot of mining centers in the country that could have uh, come to fruition and encourage employment and help to douse the insecurity and the banditry in the land if it was on the concurrent legislative list. And I sincerely think that, unlike those who are saying, let's go back to the 1963 Constitution, if you ask them, if that 1993 Constitution, Constitution was so perfect, why did, the, why did the First Republic collapse? Or those who are talking of brand new Constitution, those are far distance races. And for me, Democracy is not a revolution. It is, it is a evolutionary. And all the gains made in liberal democracy in the United States, in the UK, are all incremental. And for those who keep on condemning the 1999 Constitution, that uh, it is fraud, it is not fraud. It has its roots in the 19. 79 constitution that was given to bad by the Constituent Assembly of 1978 that was as representative as what anybody can think of. And I call the attention of such people, please, let us engage in dual restructuring where we'll get our governors who today ape emperors to return to the democratic lane and get the federal governments to shed some weight in terms of resources, because out of the 68 exclusive legislative lists, there were some that could be called uh, extra meat. Those ones should be devolved down and the resources accordingly. Because if there is no democracy at the state level, then there is no need to pump in more money and more responsibilities. I've asked myself, if uh, you, uh, like me, I support the state police to help to cushion the insecurity in the land. But if you have state security in the uh, governors who are behaving like emperors, what will be the fate of democracy? Would the opposition and the democracy not be put on harm's way? So I think that the easiest we can do as of now is to adopt dual restructuring, get the governors to return to the democratic lane, and get the federal government to shed some weight because it is a win-win situation. Uh, those who 
against dual restructuring a new brand constitution, she remember that one of the greatest uh, constitutional documents is the Magana Carta of 1215, about 800 years ago. It was also criticized when uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Steve Langdon, drafted it for uh, uh, King John. Even the, the, the successor to King John, Henry the, Henry the Third, also criticized the Magana Carta. But at the end of the day, one of the best Lego minds in history, Lord Denning, rated the Magana Carta as the greatest constitutional document in history and the greatest provider of the rights of the citizens against their sports. And it became one of the foundations of the American Constitution. So let us, instead of bickering, uh, give us a brand new constitution. Uh, the 1999 constitution is fraud. Let us further amend or alter the 1999 constitution and give the states, get the state gov governors and state governments back to democratic lane, have a local government that is administered as envisaged by section seven of that same constitution. And also, Get chapter two of the 1999 Constitution that talks of fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy to be justiciable. Because it has to be justiciable because any president of the country, any vice president of the country, any governor, any member of the House of uh, Representatives, Senate, or House of Assembly, in taking oath of office, pledge to preserve the fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy. If we pledge to preserve it, why are they now telling us that it's not justiciable? And in that chapter contains what is called the social, demo, a social contract between the leadership. If we observe chapter two of the 1999 constitution, the general security in the land will be will aid, if not totally wiped off. The gross unemployment will be the same thing. Because in that same chapter, he said the primary purpose of government is the welfare and security of the, of, of the citizenry. And he goes ahead to say that our economy should be run in such a manner that the proceeds and process of production and exchange should not be in hands of few. That whatever we should do, we are doing should be for the interests of the common person. So I think that instead of bickering and trying to throw the baby and the bathwater, that the best solution in our circumstance is to head for dual restructuring. Now, we hear you mention dual restructuring uh, more times than ever. So let's sort of understand exactly where you're coming from. Help us uh, differentiate, you know, what uh, dual restructuring uh, means materially and technically, uh, especially uh, when you, uh, I mean, when you compare it with restructuring as being proposed by some other Nigerians. What my fear is I'm looking at the fine tenets of democracy. That today, there is no governor out of the 36 states of the federation across the board, both the governors of my great party, the APC, that of the PDP, and that of ABGA. None of them adheres to the fine tenets of democracy. The local council is in their region. This is a local council that gets about 20.6 percent of federal allocation. The governors get about 26 points, and they do not like that local unit to address the grassroots. If we do do our restructuring, the average person at the village should know what the local council is doing with their money. And when we start from there, and the councillor becomes accountable. The local council chairman becomes accountable. And the governor also is interrogated by the state legislature. And the judiciary at the state level is also independent. Can I judge cases without fear or favor? Because as I said, the Magana Carta 
Section 4.2 said that justice should not be sold and that justice should be administered in such a manner that those who lose in a court judgment will feel satisfied that justice was done. That is not the case at the state level. If you do a comparison of the State Independent Electoral Commission vis service, -vis the National Electoral Independent Commission, you could see a wide gap in terms of credibility of election. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to say that there's anywhere we can drive to 100%. No, there's always the human factor. But the State Independent National Electoral Commission had been the greatest harm to our democracy in the past 21, 22 years. And we have a solution now at hand. Every one of us has somebody who represents him at the state level of the legislature. We have those who represent us as the federal house reps and the senators. But at the state level, because we are running rubber stamp state legislatures, when the issue of the local council came at the same time in the 18 national and state assemblies, where the state legislatures and state judiciary were given financial autonomy, only 10 states voted in favor of, of a credible, democratically administered local council elections. And that is not a plus to the Nigerian society. Yes, the governors and emperors have succeeded in deflating the search for good governance and prosperity to the center. The center receives about 52.6% percent of our federal allocation. But the governor had also hijacked or kidnapped the 26 percent he gets and the 20 percent the local council get, making it about 47 point, 47 point something percent of our revenue. And nobody is throwing such light to what is going on. Assuming, for instance, that the state government had paid attention it costs less than 20 million to install nine megawatts of, of solar in a community. The law did not deprive the states from engaging in supplying electricity to the communes. What the law limits is the quantum. All Nobody right, uh, me, me, Mr. Okay. to hook up. Yes. All right, Mr. Osita Okuchiku, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for your thoughts on the issue of restructuring and uh, other related issues. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have uh, to take on this uh, segment.